In this video, we're going to look at the processes involved when undertaking an initial verification on a domestic property to meet the requirements of BS 7671, the 17th edition of the wiring regulations. So where do we start, Tony? First, we need to understand what initial verification actually means and why we have to do it. Verification itself is defined in part two of the regulations as Important all measures that the by inspection means regime really comprises two types of inspection, ongoing inspections and final inspections. Ongoing inspections are the checks made throughout the erection process and ensure that any items that could be concealed later are checked. After all, it's a lot cheaper and convenient to replace a damaged cable before it's been plastered over. The other thing to remember is that when doing an inspection, it's more than just a visual inspection. You should use as many of your senses as you can. That's right. You can sometimes use touch to feel for damage to wiring and equipment. And after testing, when the installation is energised, you may be able to hear equipment functioning incorrectly or even smell possible overheating. I disconnected both at this end and at the other end. So I'll connect my Wanda lead clip here which in this case is the protective bonding conductor for the water installation pipe and make my way to the other end. Right, well here I am at the other end and I'm going to make my connection and I get a reading of... I can now take a reading between each connection and I should get a resistance approximately half that of either the little R1 or the little Rn readings taken earlier. And that's OK. Now I'll leave this cross connection in place and go to every socket outlet on the circuit where I need to take readings between line and neutral once again. The earthing conductor needs to be disconnected from the main earthing terminal to eliminate parallel resistances on the installation side. Therefore it is essential for safety reasons for the entire installation to be isolated from the supply before doing this. Now the instrument I'm going to use here is a no-trip loop tester and you'll notice it's got three leads. Now the earth, the green lead, I'm going on to the earthing conductor. Now it's good practice here always to put the neutral on first because if I put the line on first obviously this is waving around and it's live. So let's put the neutral on, make sure we get a good connection. Then the line, turn the instrument on now this, like many instruments, is going to give me an indication of the voltage and the fact that the polarity is correct, and it has. Press the loop test, and I've got a reading of 0.69 ohms, as does this one. But I'm going to do them manually, step by step. The first test is undertaken at the rated current of the RCD, so the instrument is set to times one. Now the RCD should operate, and it has. For general purpose RCDs to the be... The next thing is that none of the data entry boxes on the sheet should be left blank. Now this could lead the casual reader to think that the information has been missed. So usually NA for not applicable should be used. Furthermore, as this is an initial verification, there should not be any limitations or crosses. Yes, after all the electrical installation certificate is a very important document.